So if we look at this example, this is the exact example that you looked at with the revision. This is the revised piece showing you that revision happens throughout the entire writing process. Editing, however, happens at the end. You say, okay, I feel pretty confident about this. I now would like to see and have my editor uh, look for errors that I have found. So some errors you might look for are spelling, um, spacing errors. You might look for um, improper usage of punctuation or lack of punctuation, etc. So in this piece, we're going to be looking for some of those things. And I'm going to show you how to do it. You don't ever fix it for them. Because as a learner, if somebody does something for you, you won't learn. You have to do it yourself. So as, you're, as the editor, all you will do is give them breadcrumbs. You'll leave them clues to how they can fix their piece. And we're going to do that by adding a comment. And there's two ways to add a comment. You can, you need to highlight the, the area of, of error. And then you can control all M. Or you can right click on it and add a comment that way. So I'm looking at this. And the first thing I see is I'm going to highlight this I. And some of you are probably already going to say, we need to indent. So this author forgot to indent their paragraph because every new paragraph gets an indent. So we're going to add a comment and we're going to just say indent. And that should be enough of a clue to say, oh, the author needs to indent. Now we're going to read the, now read, go on to read it. I will never forget that desolate spring morning when I saw River Street for the last time. Uh, the biggest thing that pops out for me is this end punctuation. It doesn't really seem like an exclamatory sentence. It seems more of a declarative sentence. So what that means is it needs a period. So all we're going to do, leave them a clue. This is a declarative sentence. Needs a period. We could leave it at declarative sentence, but some people might forget what that is. So we're going to let them know that they're going to need a period. On the east side of the street, the Ohio River waited menacingly. I see another thing, something else that pops out at me. I see a sentence here. This is a complex sentence. And a complex sentence means it has a dependent clause and an independent clause. I see this, this section right here, and I heard a pause when I read it. So this section right here that says, on this east side of the street. Now that's the dependent. It couldn't stand alone. It needs this latter half of the sentence right here, the Ohio River waited menacingly. That right there lets me know that after a dependent clause, you need a comma. So I'm going to put a comment in that says, this is a complex sentence and needs a comma after street. The west side was lined with a single row of flood damaged houses, sitting dark and abandoned, so completely decayed that even p the poor could no longer live in them. Now I heard something in there. I see a spot where they're talking about the houses and they describe the houses sitting dark and abandoned and then they go into a transition so completely decayed so right after abandoned is a spot where they'll need a comma walls that once were pastel blue green or yellow were now or no layered with mud six or seven feet high so I think it's supposed to say now not no so we're gonna highlight that word and we're going to add a comment and we're going to say did you mean now because their word that they wrote is not incorrectly spelled it's used incorrectly so we want to make sure that's what they meant and that they just might not have known that they've done that oh I see another now when you are writing and you're looking for uh, to use numbers in your writing any number that's less than 100 needs to be spelled out in word form. So this right here, we're going to highlight this whole section 
And we're going to say that to them because we've learned this before. So numbers less than 100 need to be spelled out in word form. Okay. Painless window jams were opened like dark mouths to gulp down the muddy flood tides. And I saw an apostrophe in there. And I know apostrophe means ownership or make something uh, plural. But in this case, there's no ownership. Dark mouths, if they had said dark mouths something. But no, this was doing the action. So we're going to say no apostrophe needed. No ownership. And we're going to say OK. Once sturdy beams that supported porch roofs stood shakily, missing chunks of molded wood from their damp middles. Well, it's, I know my rule. I think the writer probably remembered that when you have a plural F, you change it to a VE. But in this scenario, roofs or roofs, it's actually roofs. So what we'll do is we'll say it's roofs. These rotting houses were still shaded by the enormous limbs of old oaks. Fed by the rich river soil, the trees loomed over the streets like strange, dark mourners. Well, in this, I see this is a spelling error. Because I know I need an U in there. And I'm just going to tell them that. Oh, U. That's simple enough. They should be able to figure that out. Their massive, gnarled roots had broken through the side the sidewalk pushing up the chunks of jagged concrete now this KN is another strategy some people might have learned before but in this scenario it's actually oop, here I am eating their cupcake we're gonna add it back we're gonna add a comment and it's actually G N A R L E D there's their spelling but look at that what did I just do I just spelt it for them so I'm going to go back to my comment, I'm going to edit that comment, and I'm actually going to say spelling error, because I don't want to do it all for them. So I'm going to make them figure it out as the writer. So did I do that in any other places? Hmm, I did roofs, and I gave them the spelling. So I'm going to change that again. I'm going to say spelling error because I really want this writer to learn not me and I don't want to have to do all the work for them so now looks like we did a nice job we're gonna go to the next section tattered dirty children played on the streets on the, played on the slabs while twangy country music drifted down from the bar at the end of the street and that's where my memory ends I think this right here is unnecessary. It's just not needed. The and. Most times we don't start sentences with and. So we'll just tell them that. Don't start a sentence with and. And then they can just get rid of that or change their word. This was the last view I had of the street where I had grown up. And I noticed another spelling error. So we'll just say spelling error and then they can go and figure out their errors on their own now as you can see we did all of these comments and on my right hand over here on the right hand side you can't see all the comments but once you go back and do look for some if you click on the yellow it will take you to the comment that was added and it'll pop up for you and once you fix that you can hit resolve so editing is the last part of the writing process it is the part where you say okay I think I'm done I want to get it checked over and then once you've fixed it this way you can then turn it in if you feel comfortable so when you're editing don't do it for them give them suggestions